This is part two of my two-part Trello for beginner series. In this video, we are going to dive into setting up advanced automations and using templates. Part one, if you didn't watch it, in that video, we did a general overview of Trello. I showed you how I personally use it in my day-to-day -day from a content creation perspective, from a task management perspective, from an organization perspective. I also dove into the general setup, so explaining what a workspace is, going over Trello boards versus Trello lists and Trello cards. And then I showed you how to set up your workspace, create your first board, create some lists, and put cards within your list. The general workflow of how you can begin getting yourself organized, getting yourself productive, and creating a streamlined workflow to keep you moving. If you are new, welcome to the channel. If you're a returning viewer, then welcome back. I appreciate you and I'm happy to have you here. When it comes to building an online business and entrepreneurship, there are many ways to go about it, and everybody from every different niche will tell you that their way is the best way. Whether it's web design, affiliate marketing, digital marketing, content creation, physical products, digital products, the list goes on and on. But one thing I think that we can all as entrepreneurs agree on is the most valuable resource above everything else, and that is our time. Time is the most valuable resource on the planet. It is essentially, for all intents and purposes, the only thing in existence that we cannot get more of, we cannot make more of, we cannot get back. Utilizing our time to the best of our ability and as efficiently as possible is super important. Now, I don't know about you, but I know for me personally, I have always been my entire life a huge procrastinator. I get overwhelmed really easily. I get bored really easily between ADHD, ENTP, multi-potentiality. I have always struggled with getting things done until I discovered Trello. As they say, overwhelm leads to indecision and indecision leads to inaction. When you have so many things to do and you don't know where to get started, you end up just essentially not doing anything. And that is not where we want to be. We want to be knocking stuff out. We want to be getting stuff done. And we want to be making progress towards our goals, right? So one of the things I briefly covered in that previous video, but we're going to dive more into in this video, are three major components that really just knock the productivity out of the park and destroy procrastination. And that is going to be templates, automation, and power-ups. Now, power-ups are basically plugins or extensions that enhance the functionality of your Trello workspace or your Trello board. First thing we're going to do is just so I can show you a power up, we're going to dive into my computer. So one of my videos that I have planned coming out in a few days from now for me recording this video is the behind the scenes of my online income streams part one, which if you want to check that out, I'll also leave that below and also link the video up here. By default, Trello allows you to attach things to your cards. Because I have this card right here, which is my online income streams explained, but then I also have this card over here, which is my video, how I'm building a $1 million online solo business in 2024. But these are connected, right? So here is my like how I'm building a $1 million business. But then part of that is me diving into the behind the scenes of my online income streams. So these two cards are related to each other. And so something that can keep me organized is if you look at Trello, we have attachments, you can attach other cards even cards that are in other boards to other cards. So if we scroll down here, I can see under my Trello attachments, I have other cards attached to this card. So this is just a way to keep you organized so that you can attach different cards to each other that are related to each other. For example, we have one of those cards called my playlist, building my big business picture. If I come over here on this left-hand side, which is like my overarching outlines, we can see that I have that right here, playlist, building my big business. So if I scroll down, I can see I have it organized under checklist where I have my videos. I've got these two videos planned. Each one of these I created a card for, and we can see those attached up here. There's the card for the two keys. Here's the card for how I'm building the $1 billion business. Here's the card for my behind the scenes part one. Since this is my playlist card, which gives me my overarching plan, I can then attach each of the individual cards so that everything is connected and that I can see my progress on various aspects of the project. With that being said, the attachment is built into Trello by default. Let's say you also have YouTube videos, right? If you want to reference a YouTube video or a blog post from something else, you can paste a link in here, do a display text, one of those that I have on here is if we go to my online income streams. In this content, I actually reference some YouTube videos. 
for example, this YouTube video about design joy on Starter Story, this is one of the inspirations for my digital consulting agency that I'm in the process of building. So I put that on here, that way I have a link to it, and I just did that by going to attachment, adding the URL, and putting the text. So if I click that, it will just open up that video on YouTube, and when I need to include it as a link, either in my blog post or in the description of my video, of, of this video, I already have the link, and so I can just copy it and paste it in there. Now, this comes default in Trello, but when it comes to power-ups, which is what we wanna talk about, if you see right here, there's a section called power-ups, and under there, I have Google Drive. One of the ways that I keep myself organized is for every card that I create, which is a, basically a piece of content, I also create a document in Google Docs as a way to write the first draft of my blog. If we just go into my Google Drive, I'll just bring that up over here. We can see over here, I have Google Documents, for some of these blogs. So right here, my six online income streams explained. So with this, because I added the Google Drive power up, I connected my Google Drive to my Trello account. So now anytime I have a document in here, I can also just attach that. So I would just click Google Drive, I would attach a file or you can attach an entire folder. Let's say I want to attach a folder. I can go into here, let's pick one, select. And now we can scroll down and I can see right here, it added that photo and I can see everything that's in that folder in my Google Drive. So if you have different pictures, you have different um, documents or things like that, right? Let's say I know I have that document, I can attach a file, then I can search, search for my six online income streams explained, click that, and now, as we can see, it has attached that. So anytime I need to reference it, instead of having to go into my Google Drive and try to find it, I can literally just come here, I can open that up, and it opens up that document for me to be able to go in, edit, do what I need to do with it, and then move on and eventually put it onto my website as a blog post and go from there. That is one power-up that I have. And really, I only use three power-ups. There are a lot of different power-ups, but I use Google Drive. I have this one up here, this calendar power-up, and then the repeat, which I'll dive into. But in order to add power-ups to your board, you just come up here to the top right where we've got these three little dots. And then right here, we have a button called power-ups. You'll open this up and by default, it'll show you like featured popular ones. Keep in mind, some of them are paid, but most of them are free. All the ones that I use are free. But then you can just search for ones for specific uses that you need, or if you know you want to connect a specific app or something like that, you can come in here and see if it works. I use three of them, like I said, the first one being Google Drive. So you can see it already says that I have it added, but if I didn't have it, you would click the add button, you would add it, and then it's in there. I use calendar as the second one, which again, right here, calendar power up. This just gives us a calendar view, which I'll show you in a second. And then the third one I use is the repeater, card repeater. So once you go through the power ups, figure out which ones you want, then I close this out, we close this out, and now they are activated on our board. Now keep in mind, power ups are specific to boards. So just because I added those power ups to this board, which is my content calendar board, does not mean that those same power ups are also gonna be on my task manager board. You have to add them to each board that you wanna use. Now, again, I only use these three power ups. Pretty much all of my boards have these three power ups, but you might have, depending on how you're using Trello, how you're using your boards, you might have different power ups for different boards because you need them for different use cases. So I already showed you the Google Drive one. The second one that I have, like I said, is called the calendar power up. Now, by default, so this is interesting, Trello has changed within the last year or two. There's the free version, which is what I use, but there is also a paid version version and the paid version unlocks certain features one of them being a calendar feature but that is the Trello version if you don't want to get the paid version to get the calendar view you can just get the power up for it the power up existed before they built that into Trello with that being said if we just go down to this drop down right here this is what changes our view. By default, the free version only has board view, which is what we're seeing right here. If you get the paid version, you can get table view, calendar view, timeline view, map view. So if you're putting locations in your cards, let's say you have like food trucks, right? And you have multiple food trucks in multiple areas where your food truck goes to different locations on different days, right? Uh, and you specify the location of the different days of the week. You could put it into map view and then it would show you your different cards or where those cards are related to the area of the map. 
not be representing. The reason I use the calendar power up is because I have the free version of Trello and so I can't get the calendar view on here. Once you add it, it creates a little tab right up here. And if you add due dates for things, we will start to see those on our calendar. This is a great way for me to plan out my content, which is why I use it in my calendar tracker. I will start to put things in my calendar, start to give them due dates, so I know what piece of content I need to work on at any given time. And once it's been completed, you'll see it gets crossed out. So I know that's already done. Right now, this is the content piece I'm working on. This actually got posted today, so I do need to close that out. I can just click it right here in the calendar, click done. And now we can see that it is now marked out. So the next piece that I need to work on is my online income streams, which that's already done. I'm just gonna edit it and stuff like that. So right now the video I'm recording is actually this one right here. So by the time you're watching, I'm recording this on the first, but it's actually not scheduled to be released until the 15th, right? So uh, it's about pre-planning, pre-scheduling, getting myself ahead of the game so that I always have stuff planned in the works being set up. So you can also drag and drop. Let's say I decide instead of doing two pieces of content a week, I wanna do three. I could technically just left click and drag and drop here and now that changes the due date. And so I can actually drag this here and drag that there. And now here, if we actually go into the card, we can now see that the due date is set to the eighth. So once you start giving stuff a due date, you can start to move things around and then that way you can get a visual representation of what it is that you have going on. Or like I could check this today, right? I can open this up today and say, oh, today's the first. Let me go check my website and make sure it was posted. Let me go check my YouTube, make sure the video went up, right? And just verify that everything that you had scheduled actually got released, right? That is why I love this calendar plugin or this calendar power up. Super useful for kind of that visual for those of us who are more organized from a visual perspective. And so just to get things on your calendar, all you do is come into your individual cards and set a due date. This one right here, Web Design with WordPress for Beginners, does not have a due date, right? If I put my date down to, we'll say December 20th, just so I can see it further out. Now it's December 20th. If I come up to my calendar power up again, I can now see on the 20th, it put that there, right? So that is how you're going to add things to your calendar. Last but not least, I have my repeater card. Now, what is this for? Exactly as it sounds, it just gives you the ability to set cards on repeat. Now, what is that useful for? If we go into my task manager, we'll see that I have this list over here called recurring tasks. Now, I have basically set up my personal daily schedule, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, for me to be able to stick to a schedule of doing specific things on specific days to keep myself organized, keep myself flowing. This works really well in combination with templates, which we'll also dive into. The repeat card, so we click up here, we can see what repeating cards do I have. I have one basically for every day of the week. I created this because if you have specific tasks that you do every day or specific tasks that you wanna do every week, why create a new card every week for you to do that when you can just automate it, right? And so the first thing I did was create templates. Now, basically a template is exactly how it sounds. I just created a card that represents everything I want to be on that day. So if we go over to my templates, I just created a list that called the templates. We'll go into my Monday. So I originally created this months ago, whenever it was, and I added a label to it, which we talked about in the previous video, just called recurring. So I knew it was going to be a template. I added attachments to it that were relevant to my weekly or daily tasks. So I've got my goals, goal trackers, and then I have my actual checklist for what I need to do. And I break it down basically from my big overarching categories, which is health, wealth, love, and happiness, or mindset, business, fitness. I have my Monday wealth tasks, which is essentially anything related to business. I have my daily engagement tasks, which is related to social media. My health tasks, which is basically my workout, so I know what I'm working out for that day. And then also just like personal reminders, drink water, take fiber, stuff like that. And then my love tasks, which is like self-love, my mindset journal, self-reflection, meditate, etc. So I created this card as a representation of what do I want to do every month. Once I did that, if we look over here under power-ups we have repeat and here's where we can set it to repeat all I did was click repeat and it will ask you when do you want this card to repeat so weekly I'm at 8 a.m. on Mondays every week we're in what list you want to put it in so that's why I created a list specifically called recurring tasks and then save so now after I did this every Monday it puts that card over here so for example the day I'm recording this today is Friday if we look over at my templates I have Friday basically it's the same thing my days are almost all the same there are a few different 
different key changes. For example, sometimes I'm into music production, so on Fridays I do some music production, some creativity stuff. I also want to read for at least one hour, whereas Monday through Thursday I'm only reading for 30 minutes. So there are some little changes here and there. Now from an automation perspective, let's say I finish all of this, in a perfect world, this is all done by 10 a.m., which let's be honest, I probably was still asleep. <laughs> so once all of my tasks have been completed, it then moves, marks as complete and moves it from recurring tasks over to done. So now, tomorrow, Saturday, there will be a new card here that will appear at 8 a.m., which if we look at that, this is the card that will be put there. That is how I use the repeating cards power up to create ways for me to keep track or keep progress on daily, weekly, monthly, etc. Now when it comes to templates, if recurring cards are just repeating the same card automatically, you would use templates if you wanted to do it manually. So for example, let's go back into my content calendar and look at my genius idea bank. I personally have a process that I go through when I am creating a piece of content or when I have an idea for a piece of content. If we, let's just say, add a card, example content idea. I'm gonna open up this card. Now let's say every time I create a new content idea, I want it to have a few checklists. So I can go into here and create checklists and say, what is the first thing that I always do when I'm creating a new piece of content, right? So initial outline. So I've created this checklist called initial outline. Now, what does that entail? So first we'll do brainstorm, we'll do research and planning, outline first draft, and use ChatGPT to get content ideas. So now let's say I'm gonna use this outline every single time I create a new idea. Well, I can do from a template perspective, and this is not a power up, this is just built into Trello. Down here at the bottom, we have what's called make template. So if I click make template, now it says this is a template card. So I'm gonna close that out. Now we can see here, example content idea, this card is a template. So if I wanted to create an area for my templates on here, then I could technically just, here we'll do it. So we'll add a, we'll add a list. Oh, actually I have templates over here. Huh, I didn't even know that I had that. So now this is my example content idea. I'm gonna drag that over to my templates. And now let's say I have a new content idea, right? Technically, I could come under my Genius Idea Bank and just click Add Card, and I could just do a new card and manually, example two, and I could manually do everything I just did, right? Or if I know that I wanna use, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. If I know that I want to use that same kind of outline, that same checklist, I could just come over here to my templates, go to Example Content Idea, right? And say, Create Card from Template. Now, we'll say example two, content idea, right? And it asks you, what do you want to include? I want to include that checklist because that checklist is what I'm using. Where do I want to create it? So I want to put it into my genius idea bank, create card. So now I have this new card with this new title and it already has that initial outline. So instead of me having to manually do that every time, it's already there. Now that is just from a template, like manual perspective. If you want to like manually do that, manually create cards, you can also click this little button right here. So instead of having to slide over all the way over here and click here and then click there, right? Cause we're trying to save time, right? Time is the most valuable thing. So we want to do things as easy and as fast and as effortless as possible. So you could also, instead of clicking add card, you could just click create from template. It's going to show you all your templates within this board. And we would just click example content idea. This is example three, create card. Now we have that template, right? That's if you want to do it manually, but we're smart. We value our time. How can we take this even further? This is really where automation comes into play. The power of combining automation with templates. If you didn't watch the previous video, I basically showed you guys how I have pretty much all of this automated to the point where I literally take something from here, and put it here and it creates a checklist. I go down to the checklist. Once the checklist is complete, it automatically gets moved over to here and it follows that process. Now, how do I have that set up? So if we come over to my templates over here. We can see I have a few templates. Now this right here is just my basic, like for my remembrance, what are my content topics? Touched on this in the previous video. These are all the things that I'm essentially creating content about or things that I'm interested in, etc. Not super important for 
the templates and automation process, but just that's what that is, just so you see it there. That way you understand like why I'm not going into it. But here is where I have my two main templates that I also use in combination with automation. My first one, I call it my brain dump tape. So if we open this up, I actually don't even use this one anymore, so I could probably delete it because I ended up changing it into the checklist template. But originally, I used to use this kind of in the same way I just showed you with the example content. I was like, oh, every time I have an idea, I want this information to be in the description so that I can just come in here and start to brain dump. I can mention references. I can add my problems, add benefits, add objections, right? Here's a ChatGPT outline that I was using to start generating content based on the idea, right? And so it was just my reference point for me to put things in here. Then I ended up creating this checklist template. And that is what I use when I move through here. So if we open up my checklist template, we'll just see there's literally nothing on here except for checklists. So I have my research and outline checklist, I have my in production checklist, my repurposing checklist, my ready to publish checklist, my promoting and sharing checklist, and my pulling micro content checklist. So this is my personal content creation flow and it is all automated. So what happens? I start with an idea, right? A blank card, it's an idea. The only thing that's in here is in the description, basically what I've put in the description as my brain dump, my key points that I want to cover within this piece of content. When I, it's time for me to begin working on it, I then will move it from my idea bank into researching and outlining. Let's move it over to researching and outlining and we will watch what happens right here. In a second, you'll see, ah, this 0-7 just appeared. What is that? Let's go into the card again. Go up, we scroll down. Oh, look, my research and outline checklist. So now I will begin doing this, right? My brain dump, I already did that. I did that up here. References, let's just say I did it for the arguments. Big problem, I did it. Big benefit, I did it. Common objections, I did it. Personal experience, I did it. Frameworks, I did it. Great, what happens now? All of the checklist is complete, and like magic, look, the in-production checklist, right? And not only did the production checklist get created, but it moved from this list over to this list. We are now here, using ChatGPT to build, right? We open it up, again, same process. And this is how my workflow goes. So as I go through these things and check them off, we'll see it just moved again, right? So now we're in repurposing. Same thing, it created a repurposing. I'm gonna go through, and I'm just gonna go through all of these so you can see it's gonna jump from one to the next. We can now see over here, it just moved into publish and now ready to publish, right? I'm gonna check this off. We'll say we published it all. It's gonna move to promoting and sharing. It's gonna create the promoting and sharing checklist. Did I share it to Facebook? Did I share it to Twitter? Share it to Tumblr? Where did I share it? Share it all of the places. Again, it's gonna mark it as complete. It moved it over again. And now it's gonna create the pulling micro content checklist, which I'll scroll over again, right? We can see it here. Last thing, boom, boom. Let's say we did all of these and now it will move it to done. And so now that entire piece of content has been created, scheduled, moved, etc. Great, how did I do all that? <laughs> That's the key point, that's why you're here. This is literally the most valuable point of this video. If you get nothing else from this video, this is the magic. So how did I do all of that? So in order to set up automations, we first, kind of like we did with Power Up, so go up to this top buttons right here. Right here, there's an automation button. So we're gonna click automation, and in the same way, key thing to note here, that your Power Ups are specific to the board that you're in. Same thing with automations. You have to set up automations for each of your boards because different boards serve different purposes, right? It just opened up in this suggestion area. I don't want that. So over here on the top left, we have rules. This is where we can create our automations. And this is why you wanna pre-plan what it is that you wanna do, because you're gonna to have to reference specific cards or specific templates or specific lists as you're building out these rules. They need to already exist. By default, we start with nothing, but then we just come into create automation and actually, you know what, instead of doing it here, I'm gonna do it from somewhere that we don't have anything set up yet. So I'm gonna open up our example board that was we did from the previous video. And so I'm going to create another list called a templates list, templates. And so this is where we're gonna start. So here we're gonna start with templates. I'm gonna add a card and I'm gonna call it checklist template. And now I need to think about what do I want to do, right? What do I want to happen? So I'm just gonna look at my overall board. So I have a to do, I have a doing, and I have a done. I'm actually gonna create one more list and I'm gonna call it ideas. So we've got ideas. 
So I'm gonna move ideas all the way to the left, which is just left click, drag, hold. And so I'm gonna start, everything that kind of like randomly pops into my head is gonna start here, right? So we'll say idea one, idea two, task three, event four, right? So we just, we have a couple cards are just like throwing things in there. Now, what I'm gonna do is say, okay, what do I want to happen when I move it from an idea into my to-do list? Once I move something from an idea into my to-do list, I want there to maybe to be a checklist created, right? But we'll go over to my templates, my checklist template, and I'm actually also going to click make template just so that I know that it's a template. And I'm going to create a checklist here and we're gonna call it to do. Now, what are all of the things that I want that maybe by default every card should have as it begins from a to-do list, right? So maybe I'm gonna to wanna to do brainstorm specific tasks, set a due date, for task completion and contact anyone that needs to be involved. So like this is a generic list of if you have something on your to-do list, these are things that maybe you would need to do, right? So we'll start with that. We'll start with the to-do list. Now, I'm gonna scroll back over. Once something has been added to a to-do to list, once I start doing it, what do I want to happen? Maybe we'll say in my card, we'll create another checklist called doing, and we'll say maybe how we're going to keep track of something as it's happening. Create weekly check-in schedule, schedule Zoom calls with relevant team members or clients, get feedback, from client. So these are just some things that maybe once you're in the process of doing something, it's actively going on. And a task can be actively going on for a few hours or an, a task could be actively going on for a week or a month, right? If this is for a client in project management, maybe you're in the process of building their website and so you need to add a web page, send it to them, get their feedback and have that loop going on. So we have a to-do list, checklist, we have a doing checklist. Pretty basic, but good start. So now this is where the automation comes in. Remember we've got our ideas list, our to-do list, our doing list, and our done list. We're gonna go back to these dots. We're going to go to our automation, close that out. If we go up to rules again, here's the kind of weird thing about Trello. You can see all of the rules across all of your boards, but if you notice, they all by default say disabled. These are all rules I have on my other boards. I personally, create specific rules for specific boards because the problem if you try to enable automation from one board to another is that if you look at like this, if you just look at the wording, it says when a card is added to the list, researching out and outlining by me, add the research and outline checklist from card checklist templates to the card and add member, Tyler Cade, me, to the card. This rule will not work on this board because I do not have a researching and outlining checklist or list. I do not have the research and outline checklist on my checklist template in this board. So this won't work, okay? So I like to just think of rules as board specific. Can you enable this here? Yes. Will it work? No. First thing we're gonna do is create an automation and it's going to ask us to select a trigger. What is the event that needs to happen in order for something else to happen, right? It's the cause and effect, it's if this, then that. Basically, you're just creating a bunch of if, if this happens, then do that statements. So what is the cause, right? So we're gonna say add a trigger, and it gives us some options. The card moves, the card changes, a date, something changes with the date, something changes with the checklist, something changes with the card content, right? What is the trigger? Depending on how you're doing this, we can go about it different ways. We want something to happen when a card is moved from the ideas list into the to-do list, right? We have to look to see what the end result is. So like if we look this one right here, it says when a card blank is added to the board, no, we don't want that because we don't want this to happen to every card across our areas. We want it to happen when it's added to a certain list, right? So then we can look at here. When a card is added to the, a specific list, we want something to happen. Yes, this is what we want. So when a card, which card? So when a card in the list ideas, right? And so by default, it should look like that. So when a card in the list ideas plus is added to, and added means created, copied, emailed, or moved into. So anytime a card is taken from this list and added to this list, the to-do list, right? That way, it this will not do it. Let's say we went, from the doing list backwards into the to-do, this won't activate, right? We're only saying when the card is moved from the ideas list 
to the to-do list, we want something to happen. And notice how it says added to, you can always do copied into, created into, moved into. Technically, we could also use moved into. The reason why I use added to is because added to is basically like a catch-all. So if you see right here, it says added means created, copied, emailed, or moved. So basically, if any card is put into the to-do list in any way, we want this to happen. That's how I'm gonna set this up. If you only want it to happen when it's moved, meaning if you just create a card by default in the to-do list, then this won't happen. It depends on how you wanna do it. After we've set that up, we'll then click the plus button. And so now we've created the trigger. When a card in the list, ideas, is added to the list to do, what do we want to happen? We wanna add a checklist. We'll select action. We've got a couple different options. You can move something else. You could add add things to it. If you wanna add a label, right? You wanted to add a link to it, right? Add a, a due date. We've got due dates here. Mark the due dates complete. Set the due dates. Maybe you wanna say, every time I create something on my to-do list, I want the due date to be within three days, right? So we'll, we'll do that right here. We'll set due date to, we'll say three days plus, okay? So once you've set due date to three days, we'll click the plus button. And so now we've added that action, but then we're gonna add another action because I also remember, we also want to add the checklist, right? So we'll set the due date to three days and we also want it to add a checklist. So we want to add the checklist to the card. Well, which checklist? So we're going to add, this is where it's annoying, but it doesn't create the drop down like it does with the other stuff. I wish it did, but for some reason it doesn't. So you have to make sure you use correct spelling, make sure you use correct capitalization, and make sure it's word for word. This is why I follow a very specific structure. For example, I use checklist template. And then for my names, I use the same name as whatever the list name is. So remember we created the to-do list, the doing list, and the done list. So my checklist for those are also to-do, doing, and done. So I wanna add the to-do checklist. And then here is asking where do you want it from? I want it from my checklist template card, because that's the card that list is already exists in. And that's just if you wanna rename it, we don't wanna do that, to the card. This is saying it will find an existing checklist with this name on the board and copies it to the card. After we do that, again, we'll just click the plus button. And now what we're saying is when a card in the list ideas is added to the list to do, set the due date to be in three days and add the to do checklist from the card checklist template to the card. So now once we've done that, we click save. It'll do a little boo, yay. And now if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it will show as enabled right here. So when a card in the list ideas is added to the list to do, set the due date in three days and add the to do checklist from the checklist template to the card. So if we close this out, let's now watch that happen, right? We'll start with idea one. I'm gonna add a label to it just so we can see some colors and things like that. Okay, so right now we have idea one. Actually, we'll say create social media marketing strategy. And so now it's in the ideas. What is our trigger? Our trigger is when we move a card from the ideas to the to do. So I'm gonna drag it. I'm gonna say I wanted to do this. Now we should see a due date happen and a checklist. And if you notice that, we see the due date is on December 4th, which is three days from now. And it added our checklist, which is to do. Great, so that first step is done. So now that we have that set up, so let's say we need to reach out to whoever our POC is. So we'll say POC, Sean Adams. Okay, so we can just put that in there for some information so I, I know who I need to contact. And then brainstorm specific tasks. I will say create a little bullet list assign schedule we've got some stuff on there and now i've brainstormed my specific tasks great so i can mark that as done but nothing happened so what are we going to do now we need to create another automation think of it as like a step-by-step -step process so that when this checklist is done then it moves this card to the doing card and adds the doing checklist so that we can continue going down the path. You can see there go to the three dots up here and click automation there, or you can also just click this automation button right here. So automation, we'll go to rules, and now we're going to basically do the same thing, create a new rule. So we're gonna create automation, we'll select our trigger, and so this time we want something to happen when a checklist is completed. When the checklist is, we've got added to or removed from, nope, that's something we want. When checklist is completed or made incomplete, so here we go, this is what we want, right? So you can either do a specific checklist, a checklist, meaning if any checklist is completed, or all checklists, right? I want to do a specific checklist. So when the checklist to do is completed, in a card 
which is in the list to do, right? Click the little plus button. So when the checklist to do is completed in a card that is in the list of to do, that's what our trigger is. We'll click that, right? So what do we want to happen? We want to move the card to the top of the list or the bottom of the list, however you want, to doing, okay? And we want to add the new checklist. We want to go to checklist and we want to add the checklist doing from the card, our checklist template to the card plus. So now we're saying when the, when the to-do checklist is completed in a card located in the to-do list, we want to move the card to the top of the doing list and then we want to add the doing checklist from the checklist template card. We'll click save, close that out, and so now we can watch that happen. So here we are into doing, we're going to mark that as complete, and so we should see that new checklist appear in a second. There we go, we now have the doing checklist, and if we close that out, we can also see it moved from to do into doing. Now we'll set up the final one. Let's say we created our weekly check-in, we scheduled our Zoom call with Sean, and now we are gonna work on getting feedback with clients, right? We have talked to our clients, changed some things that we needed to, and maybe we talked to the client and they were like, oh, I don't like this. Can you guys change that? Cool, we'll just add an item to our checklist. Make client update requests, right? So you can still add to the, even though it was part of that automation, you can still add to the list. And now, before this is the original list, Let's say we got the feedback from client, we make the client updates, and so we're gonna need feedback from client after updates, right? So we can keep adding to this, right? And until the whole checklist is marked complete, that action won't happen. So now we want to say, basically the same thing we just did. When the doing checklist is done, we want it to A, mark it as complete, and then B, move it to the done list. And so one more time, we'll go back up to our automation, click rules, go to rules, create automation, add a trigger, and here, so again, start a checklist. So when the checklist doing is completed in a card located in the list doing, right? And technically, by the way, I didn't cover this earlier, but if you have team members or stuff like that, you can also use this setting too. So by default, it's set to by anyone, right? So if anybody does this, but you could technically set it up so that this rule only runs when you do it. Or if you have another user, um, like for example, you've got a marketing manager, a marketing team, a social media manager, maybe um, a financing office, right? You could say have specific tasks that need to be done by specific team members, and then only when that team member finishes something does the action occur, right? So you can really dive deep into this if you really want to get super organized and super automated. And with that being said, I'm just going to leave it by default because A, I don't have any team members, and B, I would want this to run with anybody anyway. So we'll click the plus button. And so the trigger, when the doing checklist is completed in the doing card, what do we want to happen? We want A, the date, mark the due date is complete, right? And then B, we'll add another action. We also want to move the card to the top of the list of done, plus click save. Let's look at it one more time. And so we'll go into creating social media marketing strategy. Let's say we've made our client update requests. We got feedback from that, they like it, they're happy with it, click that. And now, so here we can see due date, it was marked as complete and it has been moved to done. That is essentially the process of automation. It is an insanely powerful tool, especially if you pre-plan it out, figure out what it is that you want to happen when you want it to happen. And it's just basically adding in step by step. Again, I'm using the free version. There is a cap on automations with the free version, but I, to this day, have been using this, like I said, for almost a year. I have never hit my cap. It resets every month, so I have multiple boards, right? Different boards are running different automations. So here it is saying, so your workspaces quota is 250 automations runs and 2,500 operations. And it tells me that's how much has been used during this period. I can look at my activity log and just see all of the different things that happen. Now just so you understand what is what, each of these rules is a, an automation rule, but then within the automation rule is where the operations happen. If I just go into edit this one, trigger when a card in list ideas is added to the list, that's one operation. Then set a due date in three days that's an operation. Then add the to-do checklist from this whenever, that's an operation, right? This one automation completes 
for operations. If you're looking at your activity, just so you understand what that means, you can have two up to 250 automation runs per month, which can include up to 2,500 operations. Basically, if you were to average that out, 10 operations per one automation. If you wanna look at my automations that I have going on, not including these two, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I currently have 19 automations set up. And with those 19, some of them have one or two, like this one has three or four, I think. I have never met my cap. And if you meet your cap, automation doesn't run. And then once your quota is reset at the end, beginning or end of every month, whenever it is, they'll just start running again. So keep an eye out for that. Point being, free version, I've never hit my quota. If you do hit your quota and you're using it that much, then maybe it might be worth it to buy the paid version. But with that being said, that is everything that you need to know, I think, from a automation power-up, etc. perspective. And just to make sure I didn't miss anything, we're gonna go look into my card, because I took notes and put them in here, right? Because that's what, what this is all about. First video, basically I talked about getting started, how I'm using it, how you set up your workspace and your boards, covered the basics. And then here, this video, we covered power-ups, right? Calendar, Google Drive, Repeater. Those are the three that I use. My templates, so creating recurring tasks having predefined checklists, and then organizing your workflow for automations, and then actually how to set up automations. This app blows my mind. I cannot tell you how much more productive I have been since I started using it for everything. And literally, it is so convenient just having everything I need in one place. Or even like I said, I still use Google Drive, I still use Dropbox, I still use other things. But the fact that I can then connect those files and things to my cards on here still allows me to have one central location. It is just seriously, if you need to punch procrastination in the face and get super productive and have some major life goals and shit, I promise you, you want to use this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to help you out as much as I can. If you found this helpful, if you found this valuable, please hit the like button, hit subscribe for more helpful content like this. As you can clearly see here on my screen, the videos that I have coming up. So depending on when you're seeing this, a lot of these should already be out. How I'm building my $1 million business in 2024 as a solo entrepreneur, going behind the scenes of my income streams, my digital content, my digital consulting agency, my free business builder program, for creators, shameless plug. If you're a content creator that already has a good size audience online, but you don't necessarily understand the behind the scenes from a business perspective and you're not earning from your content, but you would like to be, then I very much suggest checking out my free business builder program because it is for people like you. Basically, we collaborate and work together. I do everything for free. Build your website, build your digital product. It's your product, your face, your brand, everything. You promote it and then we basically just share some of the profits until a certain and quota is met and then everything gets passed off to you and you can do with it what you want. More free resources at xylarcade.com. Let me know in the comments how you plan to use this to maximize your productivity and reach your business goals in 2024 and beyond. Thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.